Fetterman Nazi! Opening your eyes to the lies of social justice. Welcome to the first of, hopefully, several Feminazi off-the-cuff videos. In these videos, I'm not going to do any significant editing. Uh, we're just going to discuss something, and I'm going to give you my thoughts as I go through them. What I want to talk about today is the Gamergate smear campaign. Let's see, Gamergate. What happens when you type Gamergate? Ah, Gamergate controversy. We need to do a little background on this. The deal with Gamergate is it was just a label assigned to a bunch of people who were angry about the fact that someone was able to garner some support in journalistic outlets by using sex. And granted, the support that they got wasn't blatant or really very overt, but they were covered by the same person or people that they were sleeping with. It all started with Zoe Quinn and the Zoe Post. If you feel like it, you can go here, you can scroll through all of this stuff but it's a lot of stuff. It is a whole lot of material. There is no way that I'm going to scroll through this and cover it all today. You can go through it yourself. There are screenshots of conversations, but the bottom line is that this humongous screed lays out the problems with Zoe Quinn and the way that she was manipulating everyone around her. Now, the way that this bled into gaming is that Zoe Quinn makes really horrible, really not very, you know, not very game games. And, well, here, I'll show you one. This is the game that she was uh, pushing at the time. Let's see. Can we actually get to the game? Oh, look, Depression Quest. Um... I am definitely... Oh, look, the YouTube video's gone for it. What a shock. Oh, you can pay money. You can pay money to play this game. Here, I'm going to allow this in my no script and probably hate myself for doing it. Okay. See all this stuff? Ah, begin. Oh, look, a photo and some text. What is all this clicky crap? Social circle. Back. See, this is this is not really a game. It's more of a choose-your-own-adventure novel. And it's not a particularly good one. Oh, look, no script blocked a bunch of flash garbage. Well, I'm not allowing it. So anyway, Depression Quest was the game that she was pushing at the time. Now, here's, here's where it gets fun. Um, which publication was it? It's been a while, so I don't remember. Was it Kotaku? There were, um... There was coverage of her game. Well, there was coverage in a couple of outlets. Oh, look, here we go, yeah. Nathan Grayson. Nathan Grayson's one of the guys that she slept with. Nathan Grayson wrote this thing about a reality TV show that got sunk, and um, it got sunk largely because of uh, Zoe being a bad person. And Zoe even tried to hijack that show that she was supposed to be on and make her own. Oh, look, I love No Script. Don't you love No Script? Ah, you know what? I don't know if she let the... Um the domain expire, but she at one point had been pushing. Where are you? All right, I'm not going to go too far. Um, the bottom line is that Zoe Quinn 
try to start her own game jam and get people to send her money to her personal PayPal, she never actually held the game jam that she was supposed to hold after this other one broke down because of her bad behavior. Where I'm going with all this is she was sleeping with these game journalists and getting favorable coverage. Ah, oh, Patricia Hernandez. If I recall correctly, Patricia Hernandez was one of her roommates. Um, it's been so long that a lot of these details are kind of faded. I'd have to go look them back up. But if you go through here, Patricia Hernandez is a pretty bad person all around. In fact, if you look, just look at the stuff Patricia Hernandez has written, she's pretty, uh... She, she has been a pretty bad person. She's very, um... Well, this, this kind of gives you the idea. Everything is feminist, social justice, warrior, cancer with her. The Zoe post goes up, reveals that there's a bunch of corruption behind the scenes, and as people start looking into it, they find more and more and more information that just casts the entire gaming press in an unfavorable light. And then there was this, Game Journal Pros. Game Journal Pros, uh, let's go to the Gamergate Quinspiracy Wiki because they're not Breitbart. Game Journal Pros was a list where a bunch of people like Nathan Grayson and a whole lot of others that were in the gaming press that were game journalists would plan. They would actually coordinate all kinds of stuff to keep everyone on message, so to speak. Um, and yes, it can be argued that journalists should generally have favorable relationships with one another. But here's the problem with Game Journal Pros. When people found it and the contents of it started getting dumped, um, they realized... They realized that this... This gamers are dead. I wonder if it's actually gonna... Well, there you go. Um, this gamers are dead thing. There were a series of articles basically declaring that the label of gamer was, quote, dead. They didn't all do it the same way. The articles had different titles, and they had different content as far as, you know, on a word level. But... The trick was that all of them had the same message, and they had the same general tone to them. So all of these publications, and I'm serious, this is a lot. I, what is it, like 15 of them? I, I'm going to pull one of them up. Oh, Leigh Alexander, because she's such a great person. Um, we can punch this up. Oh, look, there it is. So this series of articles went out after the Zoe Quinn thing hit the fan and people started going, what's going on here? Uh, why, why are all these, you know, gaming websites, why, why, is, why is all this corruption coming out? And on Game Journal Pros, they coordinated this Gamers Are Dead stuff. Games culture is a petri dish of people who know so little about how human social interaction and professional life works that they concoct online wars about social justice or game journalism ethics straight-faced and cause genuine human consequences because of video games. See, they typecast these people as the stereotypical basement-dwelling nerd, and it's basically just a giant hit piece to say if, if you are a gamer, then you're a bad person. And needless to say, this being published in gaming publications didn't go over so well. So this sort of, uh, this series of articles made it pretty clear, and maybe we can find something on Reddit, but this series of articles made it pretty clear that there was something really shady going on, and Game Journal Pros was, re was uh, discovered not long after. So... Here's where it gets fun. This whole thing started with the Zoe post, which revealed evidence of corruption in game journalism and was really more of a warning about Zoe Quinn than anything, but it revealed some minor amount of corruption, and the more people looked into it, the more they found there was more corruption under the hood, that there was a lot of backroom dealing and so on. 
Uh, there were things that people rightly felt were pretty shady, and they did not like it. And as they dug and got more angry about the fact that this stuff was going on, the people who didn't like that this stuff was coming out, um, and who Zoe, by the way, one of the things, if you read the Zoe post, is you discover that she is very good at manipulating people, especially people who are of the feminist and social justice categories. Um, she used her connections to the people in media, her connections that she had either through roommates or through her vagina, she used these connections that she had built with media people to basically go, I'm being dogpiled, um, people are saying mean things about me, uh, you like my vagina, do something about it. So she actively exploited the corruption. She actively exploited her connections that she had gotten through somewhat nefarious means to get these hit pieces published saying gamers are trash, gamers are trash, gamers are pieces of shit, gamers are bad people. So she gets these published, right? And it makes everyone absolutely pissed off. Yep, the basement dweller tarring is and has always been complete bullshit. And that's true, and it, we don't have time to go through all these posts. We never will. But, let's see. So this is what happens. At this point, it becomes pretty difficult to give you any more information in a linear fashion because these gamers are dead things set off a hailstorm, really. Um, I don't know if I can find... Maybe I can find a timeline, but Anita Sarkeesian ended up coming in on it, and that caused a bit of a mess. Is there a Gamergate timeline that does not have bias against Gamergate? Because Rational Wiki, I need to th a little aside here, Rational Wiki is they have articles that are based in rationality and skepticism, especially on quackery and bogus products, but they also have a horrible social justice slant, um, and a lot of what they post is complete and utter bullshit. Let's see. Oh, that is not easy to read. So if you go to Rational Wiki, you'll find that things are very different. Yeah, Gamergate is what happened when the neo reaction or when the reactionary rejects of 4chan teamed up to be the personal army of an abuser and attack women who make and write about video games. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. They Gamergate's been cast in a negative light, but it's bullshit. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Yeah, see, they have a timeline, but then there's another timeline here. It's not as detailed, but this one's going to be less biased. All right. Anita Sarkeesian's stupid Kickstarter project, and oh my God, it's stupid, and she never made what she said she was going to make. Zoe Quinn publishes Depression Quest. Okay, the fine young capitalist thing. Yeah, that, um, that was an interesting little situation, too. She basically got these people who were trying to help women make video games, um, basically got them... A bunch of bad stuff happened to them. It, it's extremely complicated. Eh, there's the Zoe post. Yep, there you go. Deleted a 20,000 comment thread. Reddit shadow bans people. Yeah, the Reddit went to shit at this time. Um... Anita Sarkeesian leaves her home. I remember that. Yep, yeah, there it is. The fine young capitalist Indiegogo is shut down. Um, yeah, these people need to put more information because it's really sad that the most thorough timeline is on Rational Wiki. Um, so they're probably full of it. Oh my god, why? Why is this happening? There's so much crap. Um... Anyway, that seems to focus more on how bad Gamergate is. Um, there is... <laughs> you can go through this and you can clearly see that a lot of these people that were against the Gamergate thing, basically the pro-corruption people, um, a lot of them used their connections in media to reinforce the narrative. And here's the thing. When you control the media... 
about gaming, you can cast people in whatever light you want, which is the whole reason that the Gamergate thing happened and was an issue. Um, and as is made clear, you know, these people have media connections that are huge. So Gamergate became this sort of disastrous piece of trash. Um, it For a long time, the Wikipedia article on it, all that it said was Gamergate is, uh, let's see, there you are. Um, at the beginning of it, it, uh, it had said something about Gamergate was a harassment campaign. And that's not true. In fact, um, let me show you what happened on social media. Uh, social media. Um, here's what happened on the Chan boards. So my goal here is to show you that this went from being pissed off about the corruption and the corruption fighting back by exploiting the corruption um, to outright smearing. This is the level on which these people were operating. Um, the Gamergate board on, I think this is 8chan, had IDs so that you wouldn't be... See, everyone is the leader of Gamergate. Each individual poster would be given a randomly assigned ID based on their IP address, I assume. So you've got... Um, I'll read these messages to you that were posted to 8chan, and this is further down in the thread. That's why it's been pasted over here. But the same person posted these. Ready? This is the straw that breaks the camel's back. I don't care what you guys think anymore. This bitch needs to get doxxed, stalked, raped, and hopefully murdered. Same person replies to themselves, This, so much this. I know we're trying to keep our image clean, but you can only put up with so much. Women need to be taught a lesson they'll never forget. And then, da -da 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 oh wait, let's not skip these. Whoa, calm yourself. That sentiment doesn't help. If you feel that way, you need to take a break. Um, this is why we can't have nice things. You know we can tell you're the same person, right? And then way further down, whatever. Just remember no one is on your side. The media is on our side. The general population is on our side. And even people in politics are on our side. No one agrees with you, retards. Probably has something to do with the fact you play with toys even though you're adults and your bitter hatred for women simply because we have a vagina. So after this person posts, we should, we should dock, stalk, rape, and kill this woman, um, and then replies to themselves with, I agree, we should totally cause serious bodily harm to this woman, and then gets called out on it. He's like, you know, we know that you're the same person. You're a bunch of assholes. Don't worry, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna win. And you look, they even got a little smiley face. They're happy about this. This Gamergate false flag stuff, I mean, it, it's pretty amazing when you go looking through some of them. I wish I could find the one on Twitter. There it is, the autistic weeb one. This was characteristic. See, here's the problem with Gamergate. It was a hashtag on Twitter. That's the main way that it spread as a concept. And anybody can post anything on Twitter. You know, you can post the hashtag Gamergate on Twitter without being a member. There's not a gatekeeper. There's not, you know, some person who keeps other people out of your little club. That's not how it works. Anybody can be in Gamergate just by punching out the hashtag. So that means that because there's not a leader and because there's not any kind of hierarchy, there's no gatekeeping, unlike the corrupt people, which are this group that have a hierarchy and have organization. It's a disorganized thing. It's a grassroots thing, which means just like Occupy Wall Street, it can be hijacked by people who don't like it. So, here you go. Tweet out, the Holocaust never happened, hashtag Gamergate, hashtag Calgary Expo, and follow back, and I'll DM you a Mewtwo smash code. Now, what happens is, these people behind the scenes were posting stuff like this. Then, look, people took him up on it. It's like a bunch of 12-year-olds who were like, yeah, I want, uh, I want those codes. I, want, I don't want to have to pay for this. I want those codes. So, these people would get other people to tweet nasty stuff with the Gamergate hashtag attached. Those tweets would then be screenshotted and compiled together so that people could prove, prove in big fat air quotes, that Gamergate was a harassment campaign. 
But is it a harassment campaign when the harassment is being done by the people who don't like Gamergate so that they'll have something to show that it's a harassment campaign? It's like saying, I was harassed by myself, and that's a problem, so we need to shut these other people down. This is another one. This is another one. Brianna Wu is a transgendered person, um, and, and a bad person in general, really. This is a screenshot. Brianna Wu retweeted this person saying, Hey, ho, I just found out 8chan wanted to attack you again soon. Show him your strength, girl. All right, remember the ID system? All four of these posts are by the same person. Oh, my God. And they're within, like, 10 or 15 seconds of each other. Okay. When do we start harassing Brianna Wu? Soon. In 10 minutes. All right. I'm going to be sending some rape and death threats to her as a proud supporter of Gamergate. Brianna Wu could have done that herself. Easily could have done that to herself to show that she was being harassed. Uh, if you read through this this Wikipedia article, it's a dumpster fire. There was actually a massive amount of drama surrounding the Wikipedia article, too. I'll show you. Someone made a wheel. Here it is. That shows... Who was responsible for most of the content on the Gamergate wiki? Now, one of the problems with Wikipedia is that you can sort of um, watch, like, stalk an article, and you can revert stuff that other people post. So what would happen on the Wikipedia article for Gamergate is these people... Ryulong, North by South Baranov. These people that you see in the really high edit counts here, these people were posting anti-Gamergate stuff and policing the article. They were actively watching it and policing it to make sure that it stayed on message. They would revert people's posts and they would abuse the Wikipedia system. There, let me tell you about a major problem with how Wikipedia works. Wikipedia operates on a concept where you have to have sources for everything that you put in it. What's the problem with that? Now, let me see if I can find it. Ah, here it is. Here it is. This picture outlines how the Wikipedia thing... This is how the Wikipedia thing works. There it is. You remember the Gamers Are Dead articles? Well, those publications continuously posted anti-Gamergate stuff, and here's how it worked. All of these people here, see, they would say things, and then other people would feed off of them, and then, there you go, yeah, BBC News did a thing on Gamergate, and they got their information from all these other media sources that generated the Gamergate is a bunch of haters stuff. From out of nowhere. You remember Game Journal Pros? Yeah, behind the scenes, they were generating a narrative, making sure everyone stayed on message so that all of these publications would be able to present a united front of social justice bullshit. Then, more legitimate news sources see all these other news sources covering it, base their coverage on it. Then, once you get the Wikipedia, oh look, source, 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 source. Here's the problem. The validity of the sources used by these sources doesn't matter to Wikipedia. All that matters is, oh, here's a major publication, and it said a thing. Oh, look, those are sources. It must be true because they said it. That's why Wikipedia is kind of trash for this kind of stuff, and that's why the Gamergate article is trash. The problem is, I haven't read through it recently, but these things are constantly being changed, so you can't really go through it and trust what you read. I mean, it could be right, it could be wrong. FBI had a file regarding Gamergate. No arrests have ever been made or charges filed. Oh, what a shock. Yeah, Brianna Wu said the FBI got involved. Anita Sarkeesian said the FBI got involved. And it's interesting that nobody ever got arrested, even though they were in such danger, fearing for their lives. The whole subject is a mess. And honestly, it would be very difficult, very difficult to put together any kind of a, a correct documentary on the subject without going through literally hundreds of hours worth of reading and digging Feminism portal? 
See, this is the thing. The whole Gamergate thing stemmed from the fact that there was corruption in gaming journalism, but it went beyond that because the corruption went far beyond gaming journalism. Anita Sarkeesian, for example, she had that Kickstarter campaign for her feminist video whatever, and she spent all that time attacking video games and how horrible and anti-woman they were, and that raised a lot of money from a lot of gullible people, a lot of gullible social justice lunatics. You know, it, it spreads far beyond that. It, it's not like this stuff was just covered in video game press. It went beyond that. The corruption extended beyond video gaming press. Major news outlets were shown to have corruption issues. It basically took a look behind the curtain and found stuff that a lot of people didn't want to be seen. That's the reason that it had to be demonized and it had to be shut down. And the problem is, if you say something often enough, it becomes true in the minds of the drooling general public. Gamergate? Gamergate's a harassment campaign. Stemming from a harassment campaign. See? It still says that it's a harassment campaign. There's no proof. Oh, look, there's no source. There's no citation there. Isn't that funny that there's no citation? Oh, there's no citations. There's not a single citation in this entire opening paragraph. Well, that's Wikipedia for you. So this is the thing. It's not a harassment campaign. It never was. But the people who control the narrative don't want you to know that. They want you to not look behind the curtain. Don't find the wizard. Don't find out that everything is a bunch of bullshit. That's the tragic story of Gamergate. You know, a lot of people wanted things to change for the better. And rather than them changing for the better, the media controls the media. And the media can make the general public think that these people are all bad people. Oh, do you support Gamergate? Yes, I do. Well, you are a horrible person, and I will oust you from society because I've heard that you're a horrible person. Oh, I don't support Gamergate because I'm a good person because the media said that Gamergate is bad, and if you're in it, you're bad because you're a harasser. You're a hater of women. Why would you want to harass women? We could talk about this all day, but I think it's about time to close this down. But I'd like to do a documentary on this at some point, and I'd like to gather more information, given that it's been, what, I think four years, four years, roughly three or four years, since this whole mess went down, um, some of the information has decayed away or is harder to find, um, but feel free to post whatever you've got below in the comments section, and I hope to do some more of these off-the-cuff videos soon. Um, that's about it. Until next time, this is Feminazi, signing off.